What's going on Chemical Guys family and thanks so much for tuning in for today's episode of Detail Garage. Our videographer team just got back from a trip to El Mirage and if you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's a dried up lake bed and as you can see this vehicle is covered in dust and debris because they took this out there to go film some awesome shots with some really cool vehicles and it's showing the wear and tear now. So today we're going to show you how to properly remove all this kind of dust, dirt, any kind of grime and buildup and restore a beautiful shine. So not only does the dust and grime look off on the surface, but if left on there for too long, it can actually start to harm sensitive components or even sensitive finishes such as your wheels where it will deteriorate the finish or it can work its way into bearings and grease areas where it becomes abrasive. And also we're gonna be going around this vehicle showing you the areas that need to be cleaned because as we mentioned, it came from El Mirage and there's just dust everywhere, including the engine bay, the interior, and all kinds of other areas that you just not think about. So we're going to show you how to properly remove all that, starting off with the wheels, which is always going to be the dirtiest area because not only do you have the dust and dirt, but you also have road debris, grease, brake dust, and all that things just accumulate on the tire and the wheels. So to begin, we have a bucket set up with a dirt trap. We're going to be using Diablo wheel gel, which we've diluted three to one. This is going to give us the proper aeration as we use our duck foaming trigger. And what that means is as we spray, it's going to foam up on the surface and this is what's going to safely remove any abrasive particles and anything else that could damage the finish because if you're unfamiliar with wheel cleaning brake material and brake dust is very abrasive and it's also very corrosive so you want to be able to remove that very gently so you don't scratch the finish and also you want to do it in a routine fashion so that it doesn't start to pit and deteriorate the finish of your wheels so to begin our process we'll be using our pressure washer to rinse down any of the loose debris and dirt so I know a lot of guys ask what kind of pressure washer we're using and today we've chosen to use our electric pressure washer that has about 1600 psi and 1.7 gallons per minute and this is perfectly fine for automotive detailing and also to help us we're using a 15 degree angle tip and this is great for your wheel wells as well as your tires to really get down and get rid of all that kind of grease and grime so let's get started by cleaning away all the loose debris and then we can move on to the actual cleaning process. Now after rinsing it down, you can see that that took care of a lot of that loose dirt and debris. And although it looks clean and glossy, once this dries, it's gonna go back to a nasty kind of matte finish because the surface is still dirty. So to help us clean, we're gonna be using Nonsense All-Purpose Cleaner, which will spray directly onto the wheel well liner. And this is safe for anything that's on your undercarriage as well as anything else around the vehicle, including painted surfaces. I know a lot of guys ask, is it safe to use on paint? And yes, it is. But this is gonna help us to cut through stubborn staining and grease and grime. We can also use this to clean the tires to remove old dressings, as well as any stubborn filth and stains. We'll just give this a moment to dwell. In the meantime, we can grab our brush and help us clean the wheel well liners. We'll use a wheelie brush with just a little bit of Diablo for cleaning power and lubrication. And just start working our way around scrubbing away the stubborn grime, any kind of staining, because dirt, mud, road debris, all that kind of stuff builds up on the wheel well as the tire flings it up into the surface. So the wheelie brush is going to help us scrub away any kind of stubborn stains as well as any grease and grime that builds up on the inside of the wheel well liner because as the tire flings road debris up into there, it gets embedded and then over time it starts to look awful. And if it's left on there long enough, it can actually permanently stain it or cause discoloration. So it's important to clean it just remove it so you can get the best finish overall. And the wheelie brush is nice and soft so it won't damage any sensitive components as well as any kind of sensitive finishes. And it just helps to agitate the cleaners as well as lift off any kind of stubborn messes. Now that we're done with the wheel well liner, we can move on to the tire and the wheels. And to help us clean the tires, we're gonna be using Diablo wheel gel. And we'll just add a couple ounces to our bucket, which we've also inserted a dirt trap, which helps to filter out any abrasive particles so that we're not bringing it back to the tire or the wheel. And just help to aerate the product, we're going to use our pressure washer tip. And that foaming action is what's going to help us prevent any kind of scratches and swirls as we're doing our cleaning. And to begin, we're gonna start with the tires, which have old dressings as well as dirt and grimes. And using a blue stiffy brush, this is going to help lift it off. Just using that foaming action to our benefit. 
And as you can see, it already turns kind of brown. That's pulling off the filth from the tire, any kind of old dressings. And this is gonna give us a bare finish, which is gonna make it easier for new dressings to bond to the surface so they can look better and last longer. And there you have it guys. It's very easy to use the blue stiffy brush to lift off grease and grime as well as old dressings. And then once we rinse away the browning and all that kind of mess, we're gonna reveal a bare tire. But to move on, we're gonna use our smaller red rocket brush. And this is going to help us to easily get to the back of the barrel because we have these small intricate spokes. And this way we're not looking through the tire and seeing brake dust or buildup of dirt and grease in there. Just a perfectly clean tire. We'll grab some more foam and we're going to spray the wheel using Diablo Wheel Cleaner. We'll give that a moment to dwell and it'll start to loosen up any kind of stubborn messes and brake dust. And then as we clean, we're going to start at the top and work our way from top to bottom. This way we're not bringing grease and abrasive particles into areas that we've already cleaned. But you can see that the brush goes all the way to the back of the wheel, cleaning the barrel as well as the intricate areas of the spoke. And it's flexible so you can also get behind the spoke, again, for a perfectly clean finish. Next, we'll grab our green wheelie brush again, and this is what we're gonna to use to clean the face of the wheel. These soft flag tips help to prevent any kind of scratches or swirls, even on sensitive painted finishes. And it just helps to gently agitate the cleaner. And this way we can just remove any brake dust or any kind of mist areas so that the face, which is what you see most of, is perfectly clean. And again, this is gonna help us to remove the corrosive particles of brake dust. And again, this is gonna help us to remove those abrasive and corrosive particles of brake dust for a perfectly clean wheel. Now lastly, we'll grab our boar's hair brush just to get the details like the lug nuts and the emblem around the valve stem in areas where it'd be difficult to get a larger brush. You can also use this to get in between the crevices if you have intricate spokes, clean off the lug nuts. Also the emblem and logos so you have a perfectly clean wheel. And then we'll rinse this, and then we'll jump on the remaining three wheels as well as the wheel well liners and the undercarriage. And then we've got some more stuff in store for this truck to get looking its best. Now before we can move on to the actual wash process, cleaning the body of this truck, we want to make sure that we get all the dust that's trapped in the engine bay out of there because we don't want to come back to this and then bring dirt into areas we've already cleaned. So before we begin, you can see that we've already put towels in certain areas that we don't want to get water in, such as the intake where it would potentially flood or get inside of the air filter. And also, we're covering up the battery, not because the battery is not sealed, but because there's an insulation wrap around there that we don't want to get heavily saturated or potentially deteriorate. So by putting a towel over there and also avoiding the area in general, 
panel, we're just going to make sure that we're not damaging any sensitive components. And also, since this is a newer vehicle, we're not really worried about any kind of exposed electrical equipment or any kind of unsealed areas because it's meant to drive through elements where it could potentially get wet and a pressure washer is not going to do any damage, especially since we're going to be changing out our tip from a 15 degree to a more gentle white tip, which is a 40 degree angle and meaning that it's going to have a softer fan and that's going to be gentler and it's just going to help us rinse away the loose dirt and also our cleaning products so we're not damaging any sensitive components and also we're not saturating the surface with a lot of water where some people would use a hose and get tons of water in the engine bay this pressure washer is only going to put out a little bit of water where we're just going to help rinse away the dirt and debris so also a few things to keep in mind before you do any kind of engine bay detailing is one make sure that the engine is cool give it plenty of time for it to cool off so that you're not drying out your product or potentially damage any kind of expanding equipment such as your reservoir or even the block itself. And also make sure that the engine is turned off because I know a lot of people will potentially keep the engine running to make sure that they're not getting water to areas that it shouldn't be because if you get water in the electrical equipment, the engine will start to run a little bit different. But on a newer vehicle like we're working with today, it's perfectly fine to shut the vehicle off. This is not only going to be the safest way, but it's also going to be the easiest way to just clean it without making a huge mess. Like I was mentioning earlier, dust will work its way into any kind of intricate areas and also if you're working with something that's greasy, the dust is going to cling to that and over time that's going to start to get really nasty and it can become abrasive. Such as the hinge here where it's now very grimy with dirt and dust and it just looks awful. So by doing this process, we're not only going to have it look better, but also perform better. After rinsing away the loose dirt and debris, you can already tell that it looks great because it's wet and shiny, but just like the tires, once this dries, it's going to get that brown chalky look because there's still dirt on the surface and the water just helps to rinse away the heavier loose stuff. So to help us clean it away, we're going to be grabbing our nonsense all-purpose cleaner, which is safe for your engine bay as well, any kind of plastics, painted surfaces, and to begin, we're just going to start on the underside of the hood here, which as you notice, I didn't rinse because it has this felt liner. And this is an area that if you were to rinse it or get it heavily saturated, it could potentially start to sag or deteriorate. So I avoid this in general, but the easiest way to clean it is just with a clean microfiber towel that you've dampened with some nonsense all-purpose cleaner. And you can just wipe away any kind of messes, any kind of dust and grime, and use the same process on that felt piece, just so that you're not heavily saturating it. You just wipe away any kind of messes. And again, this can be used for all kinds of engine bay cleaning, whether you're working with a dusty engine bay or maybe you just did some extensive work where you have grease and grime or coolant that has spilled. This is just an easy way to remove it without damaging any kind of sensitive finishes or sensitive components, without causing any kind of stain or discoloration, but just more importantly, removing all that kind of grease and grime. Now you see how very easy it is to just gently remove the dust that accumulates on that felt pad. Again, just using a clean microfiber towel that's damp with nonsense all-purpose cleaner. It'll attract the damp towel where it will just gently remove the dust without causing any kind of saturation. And by using light pressure, we're not causing any kind of indentations or deteriorating or tearing that material. So now moving on to the intricate detailing process. As you see, it's starting to dry and it's still dusty because the water is only rinsing away the loose dirt and debris. So now we need something to help us clean it. And just using some nonsense all-purpose cleaner, just give it a fine mist, and then we'll start working it and agitating it so that we can clean away any kind of stubborn staining. Using a boar's hair brush, we're able to work in intricate areas and hard to reach areas. And this is gonna help us agitate, get that foaming power. And again, that foaming action is what helps to lift off any kind of messes and stubborn grime so that we can dig deep and reveal a factory finish. 
which will make it easier to apply dressings or if you're looking for more of that natural look this is a great way to go back to an OEM finish without causing any kind of shine or sheen but it's perfectly safe for your rubber pieces any kind of plastic and vinyl painted surfaces which is why it's a great all-purpose cleaner So after agitating the nonsense all-purpose cleaner, you see that we helped to lift off the stubborn dirt and we're going to rinse it away using our pressure washer. But this is going to help us make sure that we've not only cleaned it all away, but also to get all that spent product off the surface so it doesn't dry. So guys, this is going to conclude today's video where we tackle the tires as well as the engine bay. But we've got a ton of work in store for this truck. So stay tuned for our next video where we clean the body and get the dirt out of those hard to reach areas to get this truck looking its best. If you guys liked today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to drop your comments down below in the comment section with anything you guys may have questions about. If you want to check out any of these products, be sure to head over to our website, chemicalguys.com or your local detail garage. And again, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.